Toward the end of each year, institutional traders and degenerate gamblers alike look forward to the Santa Claus rally. According to Wall Street folklore, the end of the year should usher in a face-ripping stock rally, courtesy of Papa Claus and the American tradition of giving each other junk produced in Chinese sweatshops to celebrate the birth of Christ. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the lives of five of the dankest traders around who decided to put their fate into the hands of the jolly old man in red. Whether you're a starry-eyed novice who likes to see some spectacular Hail Marys pay off, or a sadist who likes seeing people lose even more money than you to make yourself feel better about your own 70% loss, I invite you to sit back and pour yourself a spiked eggnog as we indulge the dankest trades of the Santa Claus rally. Our first dank trader down the chimney is Red Legs 21. As a leg man, this dank trader prefers speed and short expiration. Having seen incredible results from traders on Wall Street bets who trade short-term options for massive gains, Red Legs decided in the summer of 2022 that he'd pick up and run with this highly regarded trading style and end this stressful year with a thick bag that could rival St. Nick's. He cracked open Robin Hood with $67,000 of his hard-earned cheddar and got to work. This adrenaline junkie knew that liquidity was extremely important, so he focused on the major indices and stocks, namely, SPY, Triple Q, Amazon, Tesla, UVXY, Apple, and Chipotle. He always traded between zero and three day to expiration positions, and most frequently, he traded zero day to expiration calls and puts on SPY and UVXY, a volatility ETF. But the big man found out real quick how red those legs can be. Throughout his entire trading adventure, our man barely ever had a green day. You'd think at some point you'd realize that your strategy isn't working and perhaps you should buy a dividend ETF or something like that. But Red Legs appeared content to dive into this accelerating death spiral to a 99.3% loss by mid-December. Although he posted this graph with $432 left, his comments indicate he took one more shot at a one day to expiration trade on UVXY over the weekend and lost that too. Apparently now he's homeless. Nice job, my friend. I hope you enjoyed your time at the casino. Now, let's check out Dank Trade number four. Next off the sleigh is Sergeant Gutter, who appears to be a recovered alcoholic at least four years sober, so congratulations to the sergeant. Although he's been getting his life back on track by ditching smut and alcohol and pursuing healthier hobbies like making art sculptures from wax and hitting the gym, this NCO suffered from a problem that many of us face, being broke as shit. Despite his relative poverty, the Big Chalupa was determined to jump into the stock market and take advantage of volatile prices for a vicious swing trade ahead of Christmas. So in one of the boldest moves possible, Sergeant Gutter went to his local Florida credit union and asked for $2,000 in personal loans to trade stocks during a bear market, and they gave it to him. The loan cleared on December 9th, and Chicharron tossed it straight into Robinhood the following Monday on December 12th. With Robinhood Gold, this doubled the $4,000 of buying power. By Tuesday, the market was starting to backslide off of a bear market rally, and our man knew exactly what to do. When SPY was trading for around $400, Sergeant Gutter went all in on puts at the 395 and 390 strikes expiring at the end of December and the end of January respectively. If this trade failed, not only would he be $2,000 in debt to his bank, but also $2,000 in debt to Robin Hood. But this ballsy play bore fruit. Spy got throat punched between the 12th and 15th, and his position almost 11 x to over $21,600. El Jefe closed, repaid his loan, and sat back to drink horchata with his family in Mexico. For the sergeant, Christmas came 10 days early. Congratulations on being sober and not as poor anymore. Now, let's check out Dank Trade number three. Our next Dank Trader is a humble character by the name of Jetaway, who gives us a fresh look at a classic Wall Street bets trope. Jetaway began his journey by trading normally in our typical fashion, losing 99.66 on an insolvent penny stock, down 85% on Bed Bath Beyond calls, some casual 89% losses on SPY, the usual. But toward the end of the day on October 20th, Jetaway decided he was due for a win. With his only remaining $6,300, his brave soul went all in on out of the money snap puts, expecting a huge drop on earnings the following day. And by the grace of Evan Spiegel, he was right. Snap reported a 25% loss in revenue, sending shares down 28% overnight. When he woke up the following morning, Jetaway was up 649% with an account over $45,000. And you already know what happens next. Jetaway was thrilled to finally find the golden ticket. Just buy calls and puts at earnings, and 650% gains are normal. That following Monday on October 24th, our man dumped 75% of his account into out-of-the-money Coca-Cola calls and prayed for a big rally on earnings the following day. On October 25th, Coca-Cola beat earnings by 8% and the stock shot up 2.5%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a big swing for this boomer stock. And as a result of this pop, 
Jetaway nailed a big 90% gain within 48 hours. His account hit almost 69,000, but the rampage was just beginning. By mid-November, the earnings wizard traded earnings on Apple and Meta, and just for good measure, spy FDs, all for massive gains. With only some minor losses on Teladoc and Intel, Jetaway quickly climbed to $177,000 in the span of just three weeks. Apparently, Jetaway intended to pay off his loans, but not until he hit a million dollars first. And here we go. The aspiring millionaire first yeeted into ASTS, the space station pump and dump that burned back down to Earth in August, but somehow managed to pull down every Zach Morris fan with it over the next six months. Then Tesla calls during its worst bear market ever, then American Eagle calls like it's 2006, and then he bought the news on Manchester United and watched the stock price melt off. Apparently you can buy the company that owns the soccer team, and Jetaway did not miss this opportunity to lose money. A streak of bad plays, compounded by his insistence on using only short-term options and no equities ever, crashed him all the way back down to his starting point of 6,300 by December 12th, and then down another 89% to 680. All of it gone in a matter of days. Santa was not amused. But Jetaway isn't done just yet. He promises to toss in another $40,000 of personal loans next week to take one more spin at the Wall Street Bets Casino. Get help, Jetaway. That's all I'm saying. Now, let's witness dank trade number two. Next up in the pocket is our own Wall Street Bets allegory for the Greek myth of Sisyphus. Matty405 has a simple trading style and obeys three key rules. One, only long options allowed, no shares, no theta. Number two, all options positions must be $200 contracts or cheaper. And three, he cannot withdraw until he hits a million. With rules one and two bouncing off each other, you already know he's gonna be balls deep in FDs. In fact, he claims he sometimes maxes out Weeble's position allowance at 2,500 contracts. This past summer, Matty took his first pass at swinging from a $40,000 initial deposit to $1 million, a simple 25X. For this first round beginning in early June, Matty kicked off with a combined $32,000 bet on various out of the money spy puts at the $400 and $370 strikes, expiring in the middle of the month. At the time of purchase, SPY was trading for around 415, so these 370 puts were over 10% out of the money. But in a turn of events that horrified everyone on fixed income, inflation printed a fresh 40-year high on June 8th, and the plunge protection team failed to stop SPY from taking its worst dip since January. By the time he sold on June 17th, Maddie's puts had printed to over 177,000, but it appears the following month got the best of him. After cresting 220,000 on an unspecified play, Matty spent the next month perpetually losing money on FDs until his entire account was gone. Strike one. But luckily for him, our man has deep pockets and withdrew another $40,000 from savings to try again on a new account. To improve his trading, he added a new rule, no more than 50% of your account in one position. For this second round, Matty used mostly spy puts to ride the market down in August and September, a simple strategy with little sophistication. And with spy dropping 17% over six weeks, it didn't need to be anything else. By September 30th, Matty had 8X'd his portfolio to 440,000. An average person would take some gains here, but Matty was adamant he must reach $1 million before he can withdraw. Perhaps being impatient, Matty appears to have gone all in on puts on September 30th, likely looking to achieve his $1 million target in one big play. But the market surged in the first week of October, popping 6% in just two days. That pivot wiped Matty all the way out, sending his portfolio back to less than 30,000. His gains, gone. Strike two. Without depositing more, Matty was intent to repeat his Sisyphean lifestyle. He resumed his tried and true strategy to recover from $30,000 to $198,000 by the third week of October. And on October 25th, Matty put 90% of his account into Google and Triple Q puts, banking on a terrible earnings report the following day. And he got it. Alphabet released a stunning earnings stagnation, pushing the stock down 9% for its worst day since the 2020 COVID crash. Matty took gains quickly for a massive return and then flipped to some lower key puts. In the following 48 hours, Matty's bearish plays sent him from about 200,000 to over half a million. Here, as of late December, Matty is on his third roll up the mountain with an account at about 690 grand. He had first lost it all at 220K then at 440K. Now he just busted through 660K. If I were a gambling man, and I kind of am, I'd place my money on another roll back down the hill before Maddie finally achieves his dream. But at least for now, Maddie stands strong with presence under the tree. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present our dankest trader of the Santa Claus rally. Our dankest Santa Claus is T-Man Smooth, a young, enterprising Georgia Tech student who has a thing for eyebrows and was not happy to hear from me. I'm just honored that he knew who I was. 
G-Man uses a relatively sophisticated strategy for Wall Street bets called spreads. By buying and selling options at different strikes, the trader can win even if the market doesn't move in his preferred direction. Like a true Theta Gang warrior, T-Man even uses volatility measurements to determine when to open spreads. But make no mistake, if a trader goes in too hard, these spreads can wipe him out just as quickly as FDs. And if you're trading on Robinhood, your broker might even close you out if they think you're taking on too much risk near expiration. And surprise, surprise, our homie got the Robinhood shaft more than once. Back in November, T-Man had a five-figure call credit spread on SPY that would have doubled him up if held until expiration. But Robinhood closed him out 30 minutes prior, forcing him to miss out on massive gains from SPY crashing at the end of the day. This negative Robinhood experience didn't encourage him to leave the app, but rather to exploit its weaknesses. T-Man realized that he can receive instant deposit access even if he doesn't follow through on the deposit. For example, he could initiate a fake $5,000 deposit from a bank account with $2 in it. Obviously, this transfer would fail, but Robinhood would still give him instant access to his pending $5,000 transfer, which would then double with Robinhood gold margin. For as long as that transfer was pending, T-Man had buying power, and he used it. By placing large numbers of spreads with his pending money, he could quickly double his account. When Robinhood realized the error and removed his $10,000 of buying power, T-Man will have already profited extensively and his buying power would be replenished. Further, our degenerate friend discovered he could cancel and place trades to prevent Robinhood from closing his spreads early. This allowed him to maximize his gains at expiration, although Robinhood did come back and prevent this later. The plan worked swimmingly for weeks, allowing T-Man the funding to hit $68,000. And with each gain, he celebrated by making modifications to his eyebrows specifically. First it was a slit, then a notch, whatever that is, and then plans to shave both eyebrows if he went insolvent. After any trading failure, T-Man would spoof a deposit to replenish more buying power, and somehow Robinhood didn't do anything about it. I'm not even surprised because it's Robinhood. However, T-Man finally met his match when he gambled on CPI and FOMC on December 12th. Our homie opened tight iron condors, but the $7 bullish candle blew him out, causing a 37% loss. To flip his game, T-Man used most of his account to buy strangles expiring in two days. He expected the market to either quickly reverse or shoot higher still. To increase his buying power again, our hero spoofed deposits to get more instant bonus, then maxed himself out on margin. But to his chagrin, the market flatlined and Theta ate his options. T-Man diamond handed to nothing so as not to take a small loss. And then to make matters worse, Robinhood came back and claimed their margin balance and instant deposit bonus at the same time. In the span of one week, not only did T-Man lose his entire account, but actually owed Robinhood $22,800. He had to liquidate his grad school fund just to cover the margin call. T-Man Smooth, I recommend deleting the app. Christmas dinner is about to get awkward when your grandma asks what happened to your college fund. And shave those eyebrows like you promised, no balls. In the meantime, I implore you to please accept the crown of degeneracy as we recognize you as our dankest trader of the Santa Claus rally. Who wants to be king? My final word of wisdom to you all is that gambling addiction is fun to everybody except the addict. Four out of five of these dank traders were gambling addicts, and even Sergeant Gutter, who didn't necessarily display signs of addiction, still borrowed $4,000 to buy FDs. And that passes for only somewhat irresponsible around here. No matter whether you win or lose, make sure you keep posting on Wall Street Bets so the rest of us can enjoy the hole you've dug yourselves into. I love you all. Merry Christmas, everyone.